this is my first ever talk, so bear with me. Um, but I'm gonna, here to talk to you about contributing to React, and this is gonna be a very beginner-friendly talk. Um, so, so kind of, you know, all experience levels are, are welcome. Um, I myself just graduated from a boot camp six weeks ago. Shout out to Fullstack and Grace Hopper. Um, yeah, um, so I just want to give, uh, and that's, it, that's going to be relevant later. Um, so uh, the, 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 this story starts uh, at Hacktoberfest. Who, uh, did anyone participate in Hacktoberfest here? I see some shirts. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, you know, Hacktoberfest is a, it's a month long sprint essentially to contribute to open source. Um, and you know, it sounds like a great idea. And the first question is, all right, okay, how do I start? Um, and uh, you might have heard of this little website called meetup.com. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be around, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, Meetup actually organized, uh, well, uh, DigitalOcean and, and, um, and GitHub actually organized a meetup to start Hacktoberfest in this very room. Um, and this is me uh, and some of my, my bootcamp friends uh, sitting right here. Um, and, and working on stuff. Uh, a lot of people, when they did Hacktoberfest, uh, did you know small little PRs uh, just to get their juices flowing. But uh, I wanted to aim for something ambitious uh, as well. Um, and the most ambitious thing I could think of was contributing to React. Um, so the first thing you do uh, is hit the docs, and the docs tell you, all right, like literally how to contribute. There's four pages of stuff. Go through that. Um, the links are all here. You can look them up. Uh, this uh, presentation's online. It's also written in React, uh, fun note. Um, and then it also tells you how to make your first pull request. Um, and really, it's, it's, it's laid out for you. Like, I don't see any other uh, open source project that it's so easy to, to, to get started in. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a wonder why uh, more people don't get, don't get involved. Um, and that's what I'm here to, to sort of advocate. Um, so they actually label good first issues and, and difficulty levels in their GitHub. This is a screenshot as of 2 a.m. this morning because uh, that's when I put this together. Um, um, and uh, you know, it's like, you know, they, 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 they kind of go through and they could solve this themselves in like five minutes, but they leave it out so that they have that funnel of people uh, uh, getting used to the React code base um, and, and getting used to working in open source. Um, the first thing you do is clean the issue, so just calling dibs. Um, because a lot of people, it's very competitive. You can see that they apply the uh, difficulty beginner thing on October 4th. Uh, I, I recognize the, uh, the text is a little small here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, verbally narrate. And I claimed on October 5th. So uh, you do wanna sort of monitor the, the GitHub repos uh, for your first issues if you wanna claim them. Uh, just, to ex just to explain a little bit, uh, because my, the issue I picked is very relatable. Um, when you first learn React, um, a lot of the times, you know, when you, when you declare a component, you, uh, you're supposed to extend react.component, right? Um, well, what if you don't do that? It's, that's actually still valid JavaScript. And you can, you can create a JavaScript class with a render method and send it into React DOM. It will still accept it, but it's, gonna, it's not going to render. And the error, uh, does anyone know the error offhand? Well, I already showed it, <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, the, the error is type error cannot call class as a function. So this is not a very good uh, development experience over here. I should probably zoom that out. Yeah, there we go, ooh, nice and big. Um, so uh, that's not a very good developer experience. So the, the, the issue that they, uh, that they wanted to suggest was really just to like improve the error when you've forgotten to extend react.component, right? Um, they even give you a suggested sort of warning they even give you the pointer to which file to put it in. Literally like silver platter, what more could you want? Only problem is, like, so, so it should be easy, right? But the only problem is I went, I forked React, I built it locally on my machine, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna knock this out in like you know, five minutes, I'm done, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, but no, it doesn't exist. Uh, I'm a bit, so this is me commenting, I'm a bit confused, React Composite Component no longer seems to be there, it only exists in tests, was it renamed somehow? Um, so uh, there's, there's some hints here, but any, any ideas from the audience on why you think uh, the files might no longer exist when, when they clearly point it to where it was? Any ideas? What's that? It's a version difference, it's related to a version difference, but I'm looking for something more specific. This, uh, this issue was raised in July, and I started on it in October. What was it? The release of React 16. Exactly, React Fiber was a complete rewrite of the internals. So the issue was completely changed on, on me, and, uh, and, that's, uh, and this, is, this is sort of the press release, uh, so uh, points to you for, for that. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, that, and that's some, that illustrates the point about React, is they, they move extremely quickly and, um, and it, you have to be pretty uh, uh, able to sort of uh, to flow, the, flow the changes. Um, so fortunately, you know, I, I commented my confusion 
Um, and they, they actually helped me out and, and said, uh, you know, th that logic is now in React Fiber class component. So that's all, that's all great. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go too much into in a detail about what I did next, but because it's all going to be different for every single issue. But I'm just going to call it uh, code spelunking. And this is the, the general conception of what you, what you need to do to, 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 to be able to, to uh, comprehend such a large code base so quickly. Because um, I only spent a few, uh, you know, max total a few hours on this. Um, first is you read, read the docs, right? This is the second part of the docs where, where, they, where they give you the overview of the code base, how it's organized. Uh, one thing to note is React is a monorepo. So uh, a rep basically it's, a re it's one GitHub repo that is responsible for multiple NPM modules. So if you see in the background over here, I've got, re uh, you know, this is, we're in, we're in Facebook slash React, but then uh, that's, also, that's got React, that's got React DOM, that's got React Native Render, it's got a whole bunch of other things. Um, so uh, that's all explained in the docs. Um, React internals get rearranged a lot, as, you've, as I've already explained. What that also means is that if you take a while to, to uh, do, your, do your fixes, then merge conflicts will happen, um, and you have to sort of keep up to speed on that. Um, the last tip I, I probably have is to use the fixtures, and you might ask what fixtures are, because uh, I think that's a very uh, niche kind of thing. Uh, so fixtures are integration tests. Uh, this is an example of what an integration test looks like. Uh, things that work individually uh, may not work together uh, if, you, if you sort of put them in a real world situation. Um, so this is a React fixture, and fixtures are awesome because basically what they do is they set up default use cases for you to look at. This is the React DOM fixture where you can actually uh, select different React versions and see the same thing in different versions. So it's very good for you to see regressions in your behavior as well as in your local build when you're trying to add a new warning as I was trying to do. So um, you, know, you should use them and, and definitely check them out. Um, they're, they're a great concept that uh, applies beyond React. So three hours of trial and error. This is Hugh Jackman uh, in the great hacking scene. Um, uh, and I checked all, I, I like followed all the instructions, dotted every I and crossed every T. Uh, and I was aiming for per per perfection, right? Which is one shot, like PR in from out of nowhere and just goes right into the repo. Uh, fantastic, right? Perfection. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, that was not so, it didn't go so well. Um, this is Sebastian Markbadge, uh, the, uh, the first respondent on my PR. Uh, this guy is a member of TC39 and on the React uh, committee. Um, he is responsible for deciding the future of JavaScript. And uh, he's taking time out of his day and telling me that um, it looks like uh, I have some extra JSON files in my commit. Um, so uh, what's going on here? It's basically um, uh, me being a sort of first time open source contributor. Um, I, I got used to sort of running tests and then doing git add dot, git commit everything. Right, um, and you know that's fine in your own your own projects. But when you're running tests and when, you, when you're doing yarn and you're sort of bumping versions here and there, um, you, you're having hundreds and lines, hundreds of lines of code auto generated that you weren't necessarily responsible for. When you send in a PR, you should only be sending in the thing that you're actually trying to you know modify. So you got to be selective about what you put in. Anyway, so complete fail because what do you do, right? Um, so uh, like I didn't know how to git undo because uh, I was you know still relatively new uh, to, to all this stuff. Um, so the only I did a manual git undo, which is uh, I trashed my entire repo, deleted it from GitHub, reforked Facebook, <laughs> rebuilt everything, redid all the work that I did, um, and that was it. That was my git undo. Um, now I know a little bit better. It's been a month, um, and I know you can take uh, Ken Dodd's um, open source git course, which is here and it's free. Um, so uh, that was that was my fail story. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is how I this on the left is uh, what I thought I was tr trying to do, and on the right is what I ended up doing. Uh, that's probably a Hacktoberfest shirt, uh, if you don't, if you squint hard enough. Um, and uh, so I didn't feel that great, right? Like I failed very publicly. It's on my GitHub. Um, but um, you know, like I think there's, I think there's a lesson in this too. Like there's no, like no one expects you to be perfect on the first try. Um, and uh, the only thing uh, that's stopping you is just yourself getting in your own head. So really, try again. Second PR. Perfection this time, right? Like I got this. Um, so dotted every I, crossed every T, test, prettier, lint, flow, all done and passing, right? Same message as I, as I said the last time, just trying to like just slide it in there. Um, 
No. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, what I did here was, um, uh, because I, I just have a habit of being like a little bit of a perfectionist. Um, so when I, when I did all my sort of work, um, uh, just before committing, I like tweaked some, some of the, the warning texts and like you're just used to text not being an issue in your, in your commits. But that's gonna mess with prettier and prettier uh, you know, doesn't like it when like a single space is out of, out of, uh, out of whack. Um, so this is uh, Dan Abramov, uh, again, Redux uh, creator, uh, core team member of React telling me, hey, uh, it looks like you didn't pass your test here. Uh, so that's a complete waste of his time and, and, and I should have been responsible for that uh, and that's something that you should look out for as well. Uh, really, uh, Facebook has a, a CI sort of uh, system that runs tests for you whenever you send in a PR, so you should actually check back. It takes a while to run because there's so many tests. It, uh, you should actually check back on your, on your PR like two hours after you send it in just to make sure everything's passing. I did not do that because I was so cocky. Um, so, <laughs> so, and this is me, gosh, really embarrassed Thing, look like I didn't commit the pretty fight file just and yeah whatever I just wanted to like you know embarrass myself so I don't I, I make sure that I don't ever do it again um, so, so some more trial and error uh, this is uh, the Muppets it's great um, and, and then uh, you know once uh, everything once you like manage to like do the bare minimum of like hey make sure the test pass um, <laughs> that's uh, probably a good idea when you try to co uh, contribute to react um, then they give you a line by line review this is Straight up, line by line, Danny Romov com commenting, like giving some, uh, giving some feedback on, on everything, uh, and all for free, right? Like, where do you get that? Um, then he also says, we'll need a test for this. And I'm like, wait, like, like, so that's, that's, that's here it is, like, see changes below, plus we'll need a test for this. And I'm like, wait, that was not in the issue, can you file like a different issue and like, you know, just get this in? Uh, no, um, you know, they, uh, part of your work as an open source contributor is also helping them solve some of these like minor things, uh, which is good practice, but then uh, for you, it's kind of extremely daunting because you're like, I was just here to do a thing, man, like, come on. Um, so, <laughs> uh, um, so then I'm like, okay, like, let's, uh, how hard can this be? Let's uh, learn, test, and react. Again, go back, go back to the source. Uh, it's all in the docs again. Um, this, this testing is done in Jest uh, and not Enzyme, but uh, you know, they're, they're fairly similar at their, at their core. Um, this is Ken Dodds, another TC39 member, uh, endorsing Jest. Jest is my favorite. I will not use anything else for a long, long time. Uh, he does a very good course on front-end masters if, you, if any of you are interested in taking that. Um, so uh, about another two weeks more back and forth. I'm trying to illustrate here the timeline, right? Like this is a lot of small little pieces of work, a lot of context switching. It's probably the worst way to work, but at the end of the day, that's how you, that's how you contribute in open source. Sometimes it can just be a comment and no one gets back to you for two weeks. Like that's how it is. Um, and then it's merged, hey! Um, so, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, so uh, you know, like, no, like, there's no letter in the mail or anything, it just like shows up as a thing on, on your, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just want there to be like confetti, like, just, like um, uh, um, but like, you, you do get a little nice little purple dot here, and then for every other comment that you do, you get a nice contributor tag, which is nice. You also get a shout out um, on the React release notes, so my code was shipped on 16.1 of React. Uh, and you get a little shout out here, so uh, you can sort of cherish that for until it gets boring, which is the next level, right? Like blows your mind. Um, and then uh, this is an example of Git merge, just because I like uh, GIFs, obviously. Uh, and this is how bad it can get um, when uh, you wait too long to, uh, you see that guy running across the screen for no reason. Um, so, uh, and most importantly, now when you sort of, uh, you know, this is React 16, now I'm running in a code pen. Uh, again, I forgot to extend uh, react.component, and here's the warning that I added to React. Warning, the app component uh, appears to have written a method but doesn't extact, extend React component. Uh, this is likely to cause errors, change app to extend React component instead. So instead of just this thing, you have a dev uh, only warning uh, to, to, to guide you along the way, and it's, uh, it helps you, it helps people new to React. Um, so takeaways, you do not need to know every line of code in React. You do not need to know Facebook flow, the type checking system. You do not need to know advanced Git, although it probably helps. <laughs> um, you also don't need a CS degree, and uh, I'll, t I'll talk a little bit more about that because I don't have a CS degree. You do need patience because it, takes, it took me about you know, a month from beginning to end. Uh, you do need diligence, which is sort of checking every box because you don't want to waste time, right? Like um, I wasted a lot of time being, you know, just, you know, just like diving straight in. You need determination because uh, sometimes the, the specs change on you. I didn't know I had to do a test the, from, the, from the beginning, but like I just look at that as like, getting used to how things are in a, in a repo. Because when you, when you join 
um, you know, a, a repo, you're joining a community, and they, they have established norms that uh, you might not necessarily know when you when you come in. So uh, don't don't be don't be sort of upset when they when they go like, oh, like by the way, you you didn't do this. By the way, and, and you're like that wasn't in the original spec. Um, that's not how you would work in real life. But then uh, this is open source, and people have sort of uh, you know community norms as well as uh, in the limited time. Um, and lastly, I think you need to enjoy it. Like if if, if you're not having fun, then this is not for you. Uh, and it's not for everyone, um, but uh, if you if you like sort of uh, you know participating in, in in this kind of open source stuff, um, I think it should be fun. Um, I don't know what I have here. Oh yeah, so oh so more inspiration. Uh, this is broken in Safari. Thank you Safari. Um, but uh, but this uh, this was meant to show. Oh God. Okay. Uh, all right. This is meant to show the uh, eight team members. Only eight people are paid full time to work on React. This eight team members on on on, on the Facebook core team, um, and only okay. So um, there's a uh, text at the bottom. Just imagine again using the GPU in your head. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's right there, um, and it's and it's meant to say from an interview that was given recently actually that um, only one of these eight people have a CS degree, and frankly I don't even care which one. Like the whole point is they they all sort of contribute came into open source uh, from the community. None of them were on the original Facebook team when uh, Facebook was when React was open sourced. Uh, Flarney uh, on on the bottom left here was a bootcamp graduate from App Academy in 2013, learned React in 2015. Sophie Alpert uh, is uh, was the original first open uh, first user of Facebook, uh, uh, first non Facebook non Instagram user of React, uh, first open source contributor, and now runs the entire team. Um, so like very much open, like, and everyone else was hired from from sort of open source. Um, so that's those are inspirations. Uh, in just like in general, you kind of look up to them. This is inspiration for you. Um, React is 1.8 million downloads a month. It's 83,000 GitHub stars. So reasonably about, you know, you can conservatively say there's more than 100,000 React users, but there's only 1,144 contributors. So you can be part of the 1%. Um, so, uh, and you can join the cool kids. <laughs> Uh, so that's it. Uh, my name is Sean. Um, I'm happy to sort of mentor anyone if you're interested in getting uh, involved in React. Um, I do run a podcast for people uh, thinking about joining a bootcamp or who know people so that you can recommend them if they're thinking about joining a bootcamp. That's called imposter syndrome. Um, and hey, thank you for the presentation. But what's going to be your next pull request? Oh, um, so I'm already working on my second pull request, which is to make the server-side rendering uh, fixture in React. Um, so I mentioned fixtures earlier. Uh, what I did was use a fixture, but now I'm making a fixture for other people to use. Uh, Server-side rendering was, was sped up significantly, about three times uh, from, from React 15 to 16. And a lot of uh, edge cases are not being accounted for in, uh, in server-side rendering. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I think it's going to take way longer than, than my original uh, PR, but now I know how to work in React. So. Um, I'm also mentoring one other kid um, to uh, to do exactly what I did, which is add a warning. I think that's the best way to, to get started. Now that you've been working in the uh, code base for a while and have seen how they tag their bugs and issues, how big is the step between entry level versus medium complexity versus hard complexity? Do you feel you could solve a medium complexity issue today? And do you feel you can solve a hard complexity issue today? Um, so, sure, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I don't think there's a straight answer. Um, you know, I think I think they all vary in terms of like the the, the levels. I'm just I'm, this is the Facebook uh, issues thing. Um, first of all, uh, uh, there is no hard complex complexity. Basically, uh, people who are at the like, kind of like kind of hard level. Um, just kind of look out for every other issue and uh, look out for like, you know, see uh, us uh, RFCs, which is like requests for comments for future sort of features of React. Um, so I think that's like kind of like the, the hard level. I'm not there yet. Um, the, uh, the medium levels I, I am tackling, which is the SSR fixture. Uh, that's the one um, I'm working on right now. Uh, where is it? Uh, oh, there's, okay, well, there's something on, that's difficulty challenging, but uh, these are the medium level ones. Um, and I'm working on right now, um, all I can say is like you have to learn as, as you go along. Like you you you'll never feel ready, um, right? And, and that's kind of the whole point of this. Um, and at some point, like I've seen people say they're in over their heads and they give it up to, to someone else to work on. Um, but then you can still stay involved in the issue and and kind of learn from them. Oh, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you.